is going to be the end all be all breeding guide for Power World. Today we're going to be going over every single thing you could possibly need to know about breeding in Power World to create the strongest pals and how to efficiently do it. We're going to be going over a ton of different things from basic breeding mechanics, how to properly pass down passive skills from any pal in the game onto any pal that you might be trying to create. With this, you'll be able to create the most powerful pals in the game with all of the passive skills that you want. And it'll be a much easier process to understand after watching this video. We'll also be going over how to properly farm up all of your cake ingredients and how to get Jormantide Ignis at the beginning of your playthrough so that way you don't have to sit there waiting all the time for cake and you'll be able to cook it up incredibly fast so you can have all of your breeding needs fulfilled. Now before we get into more of the advanced breeding mechanics, we need to go over some PAL basics. Now there are a ton of different ways to be able to get pals in the game, whether you catch them in the wild, like I caught these two bristlers, or you can crossbreed to be able to create any pal in the game. Like I took this deer and this fang lope that had swift and runner on it, and I created a loop moon with runner and swift on it. This loop moon is eventually going to be bred back into a fang lope for speed, and we're going to be doing that all through this video. But before you really start breeding, there's some really important things. All pals have stats allocated into attack and defense when you catch them, and when you hatch them out of eggs. Now the wild stats can be pretty different. We caught these two at level 16 bristlers. One has no passive skills, and this level 16 one has insulated body, which is a 10% decrease to incoming lightning damage. But you'll notice that even though both of these are level 16, they have different attack and defense statistics. One has 159 defense and 258 attack, and the other has 147 defense and 266 attack. So depending on what we're breeding for, if we want either higher attack or higher defense, or a balance of both, it's really important that you pay attention to what stats your pals have before you really start the breeding process. You can liken this to IVs from Pokemon, although we don't have all the information yet. Now these weights into attack and defense are passed down onto babies. Now we bred up a bunch of Frost Alien babies, and you'll notice they all pretty much have the same stats here aside from the passive skills. On a level 1 Frost Alien, we have 112 attack and 53 defense, and we have 112 attack and 54 defense. And we also have another Frost Alien with 111 attack and 59 defense, and if we bred these two pals together, their babies would always have the exact same attack and defense stats, unless we get different passive skills on them, which could enhance their attack and defense statistics. We can always go in and see what the base attack power and the base defense is by going into the view details tab of the pals. Like once we have legend on here, we have these little blue arrows. So we can see here that we have a base attack of 113 and a base defense of 59, but we have that 20% increase to both. So the first thing you need to pay attention to when breeding is the stat allocations that your pals have, because that's what your babies are going to inherit when you hatch the eggs. For instance, I just caught these two Alpha Verdash. One has 452 attack and 350 defense at level 35, and the other 35 has 452 attack, but only 335 defense. Neither have passive skills that affect their attack and defense, but one is drastically better. So this one is a prime candidate for actually breeding with my Loop Moon, because it doesn't have any great passive skills on here, but it's got a high defensive stat allocation without sacrificing on any attack, and this will actually create my Fang Lope. Now we'll get into a little bit more detail of why I'm crossbreeding these right now. We got that Fang Lope with Runner on it, and I'm hoping to get a Fang Lope with Runner and Swift. And we actually got the Runner and Swift Fang Lope with Heated Body and Sadist. So we did get some random passives actually handed down to the baby, which isn't a huge deal. But you can see the process that we're going for. Now we got two babies here, one with Runner, one with Runner, Swift, Heated Body, and Sadist. Now Sadist increases our attack by 15%, but reduces our defense by 16%. And you can get random passive skills when you're breeding. You'll notice that we got the Swift and Runner, which we got from the parents which there is a high chance to inherit passive skills from the parents, but you do still have a chance to not inherit the skills from the parents and still inherit random ones from the universe. Now, since we're talking about stats right now, let's look at our base stat values. We've got a base stat value of 125 attack and a base defense of 74. If we look at our other Fang Lope where we only got Runner, we have a base attack of 134 and a base defense of 74. So both Fang Lope inherited that increased defense, but this one actually has a higher attack stat value. So if we were breeding specifically for attack rather than what I'm actually breeding for, which is speed, this is one of the Fang Lopes that we would want to continue breeding for higher attack values. Now I've leveled both of these to level 10. They both still have 130 defense, but you can see how the gap in other stats are widening. We now have 207 attack versus 195 attack and 1142 health 
verse 1213. So you can see as these two level up, one is going to be drastically better than the other. So it is incredibly important if you're trying to min-max to make sure that you're paying attention to your pal's base stat values before you're breeding, or while you're breeding. Now, before we get deeper into this, you're gonna need a lot of cake. So we're gonna show you how to get an infinite amount of cake because you're going to need it. But first, we're gonna show you how to get a Jormantide Ignis with level four kindling because this bad boy is going to be your cake cooker. And it's quite honestly a lifesaver for the breeding process. And yeah, you can get it early. Now, before we head out, you're gonna need any kind of heat resistant armor. The tropical outfit at the beginning of the game has heat resistance level 2, and the heat resistant pelt armor has heat resistance level 2. As long as you have heat resistance level 2 from any source, you'll be able to do this. If you have acquired any heat resistant underwear from anything, you can also use these instead of armor, which is what I do more often than not. Other than heat resistance, you're going to need access to any flyer in the game. With a little bit of patience, any flyer will allow you to be able to do this, it might just take a little bit longer with lower movement speed. The one you'll gain access to first is Nightwing. But as I mentioned, any flyer will do. There's one specific area you can find Jormantide Ignis inside of these huge dragon eggs, and it is in the volcano biome on the southwest corner of the map. You can find it anywhere on this island, as long as it is inside of a huge dragon egg. Now, I do have a few locations on this map where I have found the huge dragon eggs, and they do seem to respawn in these locations, but you can find them anywhere within this biome. As long as you have any type of flyer and heat resistance, you can come here at any level. Just take your time, avoid to higher level pals, don't go anywhere near them, and just search for your dragon eggs. Now, as I mentioned, they can spawn anywhere, but this is exactly what you're going to be looking for. These are the purple and black eggs. They spawn all over the volcano biome, and it is a huge dragon egg. Now, this one I found right here. They can spawn anywhere, but I have had the most luck around this kind of loop right here. So I usually fast travel to the Eternal Pirate Tower entrance, and I fly around this loop of the volcano, and more often than not, within 10 to 15 minutes, I will be able to find a huge dragon egg. And you can literally do this the very second you get your first flyer and have one of the best pals in the game. Not only is the best for kindling, but is it one of the most powerful pals in the game, hands down. Now, as I mentioned, they can spawn anywhere, but this is exactly what you're going to be looking for. These are the purple and black eggs. They spawn all over the volcano biome and it is a huge dragon egg. Now this one I found right here. It can spawn anywhere, but I have had the most luck around this kind of loop right here. So I usually fast travel to the Eternal Pirate Tower entrance, and I fly around this loop of the volcano, and more often than not, within 10 to 15 minutes, I will be able to find a huge dragon egg. And you can literally do this the very second you get your first flyer and have one of the best pals in the game. Not only is the best for kindling, but is it one of the most powerful pals in the game, hands down. Now, most of you, I'm sure, already know how to get all of the ingredients for cake, but there's some information you might actually not know. For instance, how to get more cake resources from your ranch pals. I've done a lot of testing with this before everything was data mined. You're going to need chickpea to be able to lay eggs. Now, your passive skills like artisan, serious, anything that increases work speed actually doesn't increase the amount of eggs a chickpea will lay or any other ranch pal for that matter. The only thing that helps improve how many items you can get from any of your ranch pals is going to be their partner skill, which means to be able to get egg layer level five, I have captured a hundred and twenty-ish chickpeas and used the pal condenser to put them all into one. Now this chickpea will lay about three to five eggs every minute, which means I only really need one of them to maintain the amount of cakes that I need for breeding. But you can also get a whole bunch of them and just smash them into your ranch to be able to get a ton of eggs incredibly quickly. Quite frankly, I feel like it's better to just slap eight chickens into a ranch and get a ton of eggs in a few minutes then spend a whole bunch of time catching a bunch of chickpeas for one godly one. Next, you're gonna wanna get a whole bunch of muzarinas to do exactly the same thing. Now you can either breed for muzarinas or you can capture them on this area of the map. And then you'll also need to get your hand on some bee guards. These are going to drop all of the honey that you're going to need at your ranch. These can be a quite a bit of a pain to be able to get because they do explode on your face before so you can catch them sometimes. So you can breed for them through crossbreeding as well. I'll leave a link in the description for the crossbreeding website to be able to make any pal your heart desires. One of the easiest and earliest ways you can get a bee guard through breeding is by taking a tombat and breeding it with a hookrates, which you can find at night throughout any of these early game zones. The same thing goes for the tombat spawns. 
It's probably going to be easier to breed a Tombat and a Hookertes together for a whole bunch of Begards than going out and getting your face exploded. Now, if you're rolling dirty in cash, maybe from watching one of my other videos on how to make all the money in Pal World, then you don't need to farm up these cake resources at all. You can head to any of the merchant locations. There is one right here at the beginning of the game just east of the Marsh Islands Church Ruins. There is a wandering merchant right here, which you can actually tame and keep at your base if you so desire. You don't have to come here all the time. You can buy eggs for 50 gold apiece. You can buy milk. You can even buy wheat, wool, and a bunch of other things as well. Aside from that, the only other thing you're going to need is wheat. I recommend having two of the wheat plantations. And get yourself a Lylean. You can get these at the beginning of the game by breeding various pals. I would recommend checking out the crossbreeding website because there are a ton of different ways to be able to make it. This will handle all of your planting needs. A Jormantide would be great as well or any water pal. And I also recommend having a Verdash as your harvester. But my perfect setup is one to two Lylenes, one Verdash, and one Jormantide, and that takes care of business pretty good. If you want an even better harvester, Frost Alley and Noct is the best one in the game, but that is an endgame legendary pal. Now that we've got that out of the way, let's get into breeding the perfect Fanglope. The reason we're doing this is because they are incredibly fast, but they're also small enough to get through caves. So this is going to be the pal that we use for getting through caves extremely quickly. Or really anywhere else in the game. I just think they're kind of cool. Now we're going to be doing a lot of different things and we're also going to be showing how to transfer the legend passive skill onto a much lower level pal. And we have three different ways of acquiring Fanglopes and we're going to start from the basic version right here without actually transferring down the legendary stat. Now we're going to be utilizing crossbreeding with the crossbreeding website that I have linked in the description and we're going to be breeding Fanglope to Fanglope as well. So this is going to be a in-depth process but it's going to teach you every single thing you could possibly need to know to do this for yourself. Now the first thing we're going to do is I got lucky and I got a Fanglope with just the runner skill but I also got an Ichthydeer, I'm just going to call it Deer Boy, with Swift. Now since these are two passive skills that I absolutely want on a mount that I'm going to be riding because they are the two of the best ones. I've decided to breed these together to get a pal to hatch an egg with just these two skills available. These two did lay a dark egg and out of this dark egg I was able to hatch a loop moon with just runner and swift as its passive skills. This is perfect. Now you're probably wondering okay you've got a loop moon but you're looking for a fang lope. Well, now what we need to do is we need to check the breeding website and figure out what a loot moon can breed with to be able to create a fang lope. Now, this is the website that I have been using. This is the original website that came out from the person that actually discovered this entire breeding process. There's a bunch of other websites you can use, but I like this one a lot. Maybe it's because I've been using it for so long. Now, there's a couple different ways you can use this. You can go from parent to parent and you can see what you can make, or you can go by desired child. Now, what I've done is I know that I want to make a fang lope. So what I've done is I've selected fang lope under my desired child, and I make sure that the must have parent is none. This gives me a list of everything in the game that can make a fang lope by breeding together and from this i can look inside of this list and see what pals i have good stats on or passive skills to be able to create a fang lope now since i did create loop moon with the skills that i wanted these are the options that i have i could do a robin quill robin quill terra verdash or felbat I've gone down the Verdash route, and lo and behold, it's the Verdash that we were talking about earlier. So now I'm currently breeding a Verdash that currently has heated body on it. Now in a perfect world, this Verdash would have no passive skills because I really don't want to transfer anything but Swift or Runner at this point in time. But unfortunately, we do have heated body on here. Now I have already gone through the process of hatching a bunch of these Fanglope from this breeding combination. We've got Swift and Runner on a few of them. We got Heated Body and Dainty Eater. We got Runner on one, but I haven't hatched one with specifically just Runner and Swift on one. Now this process can take a little bit of time, and I highly recommend when crossbreeding, if you're wanting to carry over specific passive skills like just Runner and Swift, and you have that on one pal like this, then you definitely want to breed it with a pal that has no passive skills. What I'm doing is making my life harder right now, but it is still possible. So many of you out there probably think that having a pal with no passive skills is actually bad, but it can be extremely beneficial for crossbreeding, so I definitely recommend saving them. I also recommend saving any particular pals that have golden skills, even if they're lower level, they could come in handy for crossbreeding in the future. Now, while I'm doing this, I also want to make sure that I'm trying to pass down that legend skill. So I'm breeding a Frost Stallion with a Nox right now, which is going to be hatching these Scorching Eggs. These are going to get me a Van Wyrm. My goal right now is to breed, at the end of the day, a Loop Moon with a Verdash. 
and I need a Van Wyrm to be able to make a Verdash. So you can see how complicated this gets. I've already got the Loot Moon that I want. So now I'm trying to get a Verdash that has the Legend stat. So I need to hatch these Van Wyrms and see what I get. I've got a Van Wyrm with Swift, Runner, Legend, and Sadist on there. That's actually pretty freaking great. I got another one with Swift and Artisan. I gotta wait for these two to hatch. Now there is a couple different things you can do to actually speed up the process of them laying eggs. And also we got the uh, breeding is kind of ticking up slowly but surely here. But what I like doing is I like making sure that I have a really good food in here. And this is honestly just a great tip for any base. When you can upgrade to salads, do it as quick as possible. So it slightly improves the work speed for a period of time, but it also recovers 11 sanity every single time that they eat it. So you'll never have a problem with sanity, but you also get a work speed increase every single single time they eat it. So what you can do is you can actually feed your pals before putting them in the breeding pen because now the pals actually won't leave the pens while they're breeding to eat out of the feed bin. This used to work really well before that but now you have to manually feed them before you put them in there. But you can still use this monitoring stand to put them to super hard working. And what this will do is change their work speed. So now instead of 70, we have 105. This isn't going to reduce their sanity, but what it will do is increase the speed at which they will lay eggs. So if you're looking to get the eggs as quick as possible, this is going to be the best way to do it. Now the downside of this is while it won't reduce the sanity of the pals you have in the breeding pen, it will reduce the sanity rather quickly on every pal you have in your base, other than the ones that are in the breeding pen. Since the pals in the breeding pens no longer eat, I'm assuming they actually eliminated the sanity reduction, which isn't a bad thing. But do keep in mind the sanity of your other pals is going to drop very, very quickly if you use this process. Now I took that Van Wyrm we got with the Swift, Runner, and Legend, and Sadist, and I bred it with a Fwack with no passive skills whatsoever. And I was able to get a Verdash with just the Legend passive skill. This would certainly be my preferred option, but unfortunately this Verdash is a female, and the Loot Moon that I have is a female as well. So in a perfect world, I would breed this Verdash with this Loot Moon. But instead, what I'm doing right now is taking a Verdash that I have Legend and Runner, as well as Destructive and Masochist, which I don't recommend because now I'm going to be struggling with those other passive skills, and trying to create one Fanglope with Legend, Runner, and Swift on it. And let's see what our first egg is. It's got Legend and Swift, but it's also got Destructive and a Bottomless Stomach. Now that's not actually as bad as you think it might be. Because I got a female Fanglope with Legend and Swift on it, but I also have a male Fanglope with Swift and Runner on it as well. Now, as I've mentioned a few times, the less passive skills you have on your pals when you're trying to transfer passive skills, the better it is. But also stacking like two things with Swift means you're going to have a better chance of getting Swift. We've got Runner on here and we've got Legend, so I might as well try and breed these together. I actually have a better option where I have Runner and Swift and just Heated Body. So we're going to do that one instead. But you can see the idea. You don't have to be super duper aggressive with the lack of passive skills. Because anything you do decide to combine will work eventually. There's just more optimal ways to do it than others. But quite frankly, the universe sometimes give you lemons. And sometimes you just got to smack those lemons together until they make a baby lemon that has all the stuff you want on it. So the process that I end up going for is making sure that as I hatch new eggs, I'm paying attention to anything that has better stuff. So I just hatched a male Verdash with Legend, Swift, and Runner only, which means I can replace this one that has Sadist. Now we have a male Verdash with only the three skills that we want, and a female Lootmon with Runner and Swift, which means we have a much higher chance of hatching a Fanglope with the three skills that we do desire. So essentially it is a process of elimination, removing the passive skills you don't want, and favoring the ones that you do want, while also paying attention to the actual stats of the pal, meaning the attack, defense, and HP, to make sure you are breeding the most powerful pals with the perfect passive skills. And we finally got our Fanglope with Swift, Legend, Runner, and Zen Mind. Now, Zen Mind is not great. It does increase the neutral attack damage by 10%, we could put Nimble on here or any other attack or defense focused skill. But since this is specifically and only for movement speed through dungeons, I'm actually really happy with this. Now while the process of breeding really powerful pals may seem daunting at first, once you start really understanding it, it's really not that bad. And it's really, really worth it. You can make any pal in the game extremely powerful with this process. And look how unbelievably fast this Fanglope is right now. We can make it even faster though if we add Nimble to it. It's pretty ridiculous pal. And we're not even using its speed boost. This is going to be great for getting to different areas extremely quickly. And you don't have to use crossbreeding for this whole process either. What I recommend is utilizing crossbreeding to get all the specific stats that you want. While also capturing the specific pal you're trying to get out in the wild 
four better stats in attack, HP, and defense, and possibly even really great passive skills as well, and slowly but surely combining all of those different mechanics into one ultimate pal. But thank you all so much for watching, and I'll see you all in the next one.